Directed by Osgood Perkins, starring uh, Nicolas Cage. We all know how crazy he is. <laughs> we got Mika Monroe. I guess that's how you say her name. And then we got freaking Blair Underwood. You know, the chain through the through the booty crack guy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he really is chained to the booty crack guy. You right? <laughs> he is back. Have you ever been with a lady? And you had this awesome gold chain that you have around <laughs> your neck. And you felt like, you know what, the most sexiest thing right now <laughs> is to rub this chain down the crack of her ass <laughs> to invoke. <laughs> she would, yeah. so what you wanna be? He was looking at it, he was like, Gonna rub my chain to that ass crack. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bizarre. <laughs> so weird. Wow, wow, wow. So weird, man. Was he wearing the chain? I don't think he's wearing a chain. <laughs> <laughs> he was totally. <laughs> 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 And this film follows a FBI agent who is trying to solve the murders of a serial killer. People has compared this movie to Silence of the Lambs, uh, Zodiac Sign, Zodiac, uh, numerous yeah. other other films like Seven and stuff. Going into this film, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I didn't even know the director Osgood Perkins or anything, uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed this film. I enjoyed Same. this film from the opening shots and everything where the way this camera looks by the end of the film, you're like, it's going on. We talked about in the movie smile about that unmotivated camera where the camera just like starts moving and you don't know why. And it feels mm -hmm. very eerie and strange. And, it, and it, most people avoid this because it calls a lot of attention to the camera, but it really mm -hmm. helps bring this like eeriness to the movie. And you're right, this movie is just like drenched in dread. It's uncomfortable, you can't sit right. And I think they used Nick Cage's, um, it's very natural, off-putting nature. I think they use that like to perfection because the mm -hmm. killer long legs is, truly bizarre he would appear to be a, a satan worshiper because he modified his face somehow he seems to have like some sort right. of plastic surgery on his face he seems to be obsessed with the color white making everything white he wears white head to toe all the time he even paints his face white like the joker right. he does that nick cage like sing scream thing going on it's very unnerving i'm ready ready for the big ride baby him singing like that and the screaming and the screeching, I just could never get comfortable. And I thought that was really, really great. It's it's a very fun movie to watch, a very unsettling film to watch, very eerie film to watch. I watched another reviewer by the name of Chris Stuckman. We all know Chris Stuckman here. And he said a point that I actually agree with, and we've said this uh, several times on the show, when we're talking about horror and comedy, right? Because Jordan Peele says there's a little, there's a fine line between it that always walks that line. Mm -hmm. um, Nicholas Cage's performance in this thing could be viewed in certain aspects as a comedy in right. certain in certain things and certain aspects of what things that he does. But his character is disgusting. His character, right. the things that he does, is so freaking crazy. And I know uh, Stuckman mentioned that in his review. And uh, I and it's, totally and it's, and it's potentially comedic. Like it's not like oh, it's just accidentally coming off as funny. Kind of again, like the Joker, where it's very it's funny, but it's also like so deeply off putting. When you finally have the movie like in full view, like you can finally understand the movie. There's actually not that nothing particularly exceptional about the movie itself. It's all about like how it's presented to you, right? Yes. When you yes. when when you finally understand who Long Legs is and what he does and why he's doing it. It's interesting, you know, but that's that's it's not scary, right? It's the mm -hmm. fact that we don't know what is happening and why things are happening the way they're happening, and why and why it's so difficult to even guess um, what is real and what's not real and what the next scene is going to be. That's where things become really unsettling. And like you said earlier, this movie reminded me a lot of Seven. As a matter of fact, it feels like almost like a bizarre sequel to Seven, uh, where there's just like this gloomy atmosphere throughout the whole thing. There's an untested new detective trying to figure this out. 
who's right. who's working with a much older, more seasoned detective. Again, it feels very much like a spiritual successor to Seven. In the beginning of the movie, it tells us that our character Lee is a psychic. Only to go the rest of the movie without her showing any signs Anything of psychic, psychic ability, right? Exactly, so it, right. It, it, it really makes you um, question if she really is a psychic. And there's there's a there's a point in the movie where Longlegs breaks into her house and slips the key to his code on her desk, mm-hmm. right? And right. she cracks the code, and the code says, "Don't tell anybody. I told you this, or I'll kill your mother, or something like that," right? And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, so. When she has the key later, she certainly looks psychic to Blair Underwood. But right. is she psychic? And we're going to go into some spoilers, deep spoilers now, because there's really no way to continue talking about this film without, yeah. without destroying the plot. I wish, I really wish we could, because the, the reveals are very, very good. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm, you're, t- you're totally right. And I think the movie knows that it's difficult to talk about this movie. The trailers withhold so much, like... I literally went to this movie practically blind and I'd seen all the trailers. You know what I mean? But we learned that Long Legs and our character Lee are much closer than we think. Like a yes. lot closer. Nicolas Cage even says, you can call me the man downstairs. And I was like, oh, is he calling himself the devil? Is that what he's doing? Mm. Only for it to be very literal. She grew up potentially with Long Legs living in her basement. Um, yeah. her whole life and that is really creepy and really off-putting but it also starts to poke holes in this idea that of her being a psychic being psychic <laughs> right <laughs> exactly because yeah. clearly something is happening here right and this movie more or less confirms that I guess Satan is real in this universe and he seems to have a very real presence and he can live in these little balls or something like that. I don't know. So is she psychic or does she much, much more in touch with like um, a satanic spirit than even she knows? Because long legs, again, slips her information and Mm -hmm. she very conveniently forgets things, right? There are things she just doesn't remember. She doesn't even, she has no memory, I guess, of going into the basement at any point. In, in her life. So how is that possible? Or, but is or, this something the devil did? Or I don't know. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying. Or is it the, the devil that's blocking those memories from coming true? Because right. her mother is involved in this to basically protect her as a child because the devil wanted her. The devil is presented in this in this film through these dolls, these puppets that that long legs makes. And there's a little, like you just mentioned, a little silver ball that's in the back that's in their head. We don't understand the how brain. the call <laughs> yeah. the brain. And we don't understand how these mechanisms work or anything. It's just they're there and we're supposed to to believe that this is a tool that that conducts or conjures up the devil, the devil through right. the doll. And what's so great about that is it sounds so stupid to say that out loud, right? And the characters react appropriately. They're like, Mm -hmm. okay. (laughs) They're like, so the devil's living in this doll? All right. And also, I feel like I noticed things in the movie that seemed to hint that Longlegs and Lee were much closer than um, Mm -hmm. we initially thought. For example, when she finds out long legs is algorithm right she looks in this book that she has and she 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 matches this triangle up to some triangle that you know he created or something like that right what if another book just drew the triangle slightly differently right and they wouldn't she wouldn't be able to to catch him mm-hmm. but long legs must have known that she had that book right it really po- mm-hmm. pokes out of holes and like is she really psychic or is she really just being helped is she also a part of long legs's plan <laughs> And that is <laughs> so scary and so off-putting Yo. and so weird. I loved it. The dolls itself, the puppets itself that uh, Long Legs makes to basically lure the families in. Because once you give the present, which her, her mother was the delivery person here, mm-hmm. uh, masking as a nun of the church. Right. And give the present to this this child on her, on her birthday. They open it up. That's when all hell breaks loose. So, like, why do you think Long Legs offered this deal to Lee's mom, and he did, he didn't offer this to anyone else. Well, if you notice, when she saw her out there, she had a gun in her hand. Yeah, she sure did. <laughs> so, so he could have been like, "Oh well, you know how crazy he is." He's like, "Oh, mm. 
I want to offer you this deal so you don't blow my head off. <laughs> and, and I think she had a gun because that showed how far she would go to protect mm-hmm. her daughter. Exactly. That that's definitely is a symbol of how far she would go to protect her daughter because you definitely see how that is ended at the end of the film. Does he or does the devil believe that making this deal could guarantee more child souls? Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, it's a lot of things. Maybe that was it's part of the plan of- the whole time. I don't know because again, like the mother did go on a killing spree, just like all the fathers do after they get the the little doll. So like I, I don't know. They have like this little black cloth over. The doll, and then you can yeah. see through can the see black the, eyes. the red yeah. eyes. That's like, yo, so good. It's so good. <laughs> and there are moments when, like, she's like at her desk, and she's like working on the working on the the crime or whatever. Mm-hmm. And out the window, there is just this like looming figure with like horns and like big huge like ram horns you know yeah. and the, the movie doesn't call attention to it doesn't say anything no. about it it's you just, just have to look there. at it yeah you're like what the fuck and then the camera just cuts and you're like whoa that's really weird when you, you see the people that's on like on X and, and saying that this is the scariest movie you've ever seen this year people are running out of the theater throwing up and, and spilling milk and all that <laughs> stuff <laughs> no <laughs> it, it is eerie the director wants you to see what's in the center of the frame but he also wants you to be like with this wide camera lens that i got look at what's going on around yeah see yeah. other stuff that's around there that that keys in on this story okay yeah. that's this the mo- eeriness this movie reminded me a lot of barbarian where like there are there there are <laughs> there are just scenes where people are talking in front of just like an open door, the door's just open, and and the the door is open, and there's just blackness back there, and you just can't mm-hmm. help but just look at that door, <laughs> you know, like you mm-hmm. keep keep expecting something to come through, you know. But when right. people talk about this is like the the scariest movie, I'm always concerned about that because I think a lot of people, and we've talked about this before on the channel, I think a lot of people define scary as like how many jump scares, right? I was just about to say that. And this movie, mm-hmm. while it does have jump scares. It's not. It's not a big part of the movie at all, right? As it's, so, if you're if you're counting jump scares, easy. yeah, exactly. If you're counting jump scares, there's like virtually none, um, which I think is so good, right? <laughs> because the is it gives the movie room to like be as I said before, like a little splinter in your mind, you know, where mm-hmm. it gets in there and you just can't help but think, right? You just can't help but sit around and chew on it. You're like, why was mm-hmm. Long Legs in the basement? Why could she <laughs> remember that kind of stuff? And I agree with you. And the thing about the film that when people are saying about it's scary, right? what's scary about this film is the unknown. Mm-hmm. Okay, like, uh, is this stuff really real within this film that you're seeing? Um, the unknown of where the director is going to take you next. Um, that is the eeriness and, and, and the scariness about this. I also like the, the, the use of the color white because by the end of the film, I believe Lee, I believe our main character Lee is also wearing white and so mm-hmm. is long legs. And clearly white is like a color purity. associated. Well, most people would think is purity. But mm-hmm. clearly it's associated with the devil, right? And um, I think that's really interesting, that bizarre contradiction between like good and evil, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I also know that white is associated with evil in other cultures as well, but not, you know, our culture. So again, that's that's really interesting, really fascinating. And other little th- mm-hmm. other little details, like the way her mom physically looks, she looks like long legs right? she's got the long yeah. hair she's wearing all the white her face mm-hmm. is pale like she looks a lot like long yeah. legs which brings me to an area which i'm going to call conspiracy theory land okay this there's nothing right. in the movie to really confirm or deny this which is what makes mm-hmm. it fun to me conspiracy but, theory land sorry yeah. <laughs> conspiracy <laughs> theory land no <laughs> rides no rides here no <laughs> Or one ride straight to hell. But <laughs> we, <laughs> we learned that Long Legs operates by delivering these dolls to these little girls. And the girls, their birthday has to be on a certain date in order to fix, mm-hmm. in order to fit his algorithm. And Lee fits the algorithm very nicely, right? And we know mm-hmm. that Long Legs met with Lee when Lee was a little girl. But there's one problem. The father of the little girl seems to be key into committing these heinous atrocities the devil seems to put the whole family under some sort of a hit and hit and, like mm-hmm. hypnosis while the father right. gets like brutally angrily violent mm-hmm. but we never see lee's father right could his plan have even worked against lee if so who is lee's father is lee's father 
Long legs? Long legs. <laughs> like, like, and that's, that's, that's conspiracy that's theory so, land. <laughs> that's so fun. And the movie, yeah. again, it, it gives you nothing to confirm this. Not to my knowledge. And it gives you nothing to deny this. Not to my knowledge. And that's a lot of fun to chew on. So now right. you're starting to think about not only what's in the movie, but what's missing from the movie. There, She doesn't Ooh. have a father figure, and which which makes yeah. her very different from all the other potential victims. If Longlegs mm. is her father, the devil really is still doing the thing, right? Her father really is going out killing people. Again, my theory is that maybe Aye. he was he's somehow, somehow, somehow related, but the mother certainly didn't seem to recognize Longlegs. He didn't, she didn't behave like she knew, had seen him before. But maybe long legs might have tricked her somehow because clearly he can make people forget well, or the devil can make people forget. I said before with Maxine that Maxine was a fun watch, but not fun to chew on. This is really fun to chew on. I find I, there's like a lot mm -hmm. to chew on here. And um, it's fun to watch, too. Yeah, and it's a fun watch, too. So it literally has that that piece that I feel like is was missing out of Maxine. The directing on this is really, 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 really good. Yes. When he does his aspect ratio, where yes. you have the aspect ratio that looks like some 1970s film. Dude. It's like a Super and 8 aspect ratio. Mm -hmm. Super 8. And it's, that explains like the past and then it goes to, it the, to the present several times in this and it's so clean. It it's, is. It's, it, but, oh. but it, the way he does it, it calls attention to itself, which again, which is not something most people want to do. But it adds to that eeriness, right? The sides of the movie just slowly expand to fill up the whole screen. And that's really weird and strange and off-putting. And like, I just couldn't help but just like stare at it. I'm like, what? But, why is it doing that? And but that's so how strange. you know that a director is having yeah. fun within and, what he wrote. And agreed. he's intentional with what he wrote. Yes. He knows when to call attention to his own camera and when to call attention to things. Which, again, makes you want to think, why? Why, why did he do that? What is this? And the movie, like I said before, really wants you to participate um, with Lee in solving this crime. She's very, very like silent, stoned face. Socially awkward. And then she's just, just walking around and she's like, it must be something else to this. Right. We'll find it. <laughs> you know, yeah. very, very stoic and stuff. She is very odd. She seems like she's odd. not neurotypical. Like she might have some, <laughs> some exactly. issues. You know what I mean? And yeah. At first, you're like, well, her mother is some sort of religious freak, so of course she is. Mm -hmm. But her father might also be freaking long legs. Okay, so exactly. like, so exactly. it, makes, it makes sense <laughs> that she would grow up uncomfortable all the time. You know what I mean? And yeah. if her father is not long legs, then she had that dude living under her stairs, like below her feet her whole life. In the film, they find out that there is a uh, little girl that is in this psych ward that basically kind of survives the, the whole long legs situation. To be able to get into the psych ward, you gotta, you know, log your name in. And her name was written in the law books. And you're like, how the heck did her name get written in the law books if she's <laughs> right. never been there? Right. <laughs> you know? So it's like the, the movie's trying to give you little breadcrumbs that's leading you to saying like, hey, this character is in this thing a lot deeper than, than you know. <laughs> right. Because it knows that the audience is also trying to solve this murder too. Right. We're also looking at the Ooh, evidence. Love that. We're, we're, we're play, also play. trying to figure it out. You get, you get to interact with the film, you know, and you're like, why would someone write her name down? You know what I mean? <laughs> Blair Underwood asks Lee, like, how does he know your name? And she's mm -hmm. like, I don't know. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, know. How, how is that possible? Until we learn that she's literally been living with long legs, you know, pretty much her whole childhood. And when, once you know that, you can think back at Nicolas Cage's performance, and it's it's really great because there's mm. a scene where Long Legs and Lee long Harker legs. finally meet face to face, and he and he's he just looks so proud. He's like beaming. He's like, there mm -hmm. she is, my there little she... girl. <laughs> and your birthday's tomorrow, isn't tomorrow. it? Aren't you excited? You know, and he's acting like a like a relative or something, you know? And yeah. that when you think back on it, you're like, wow, that's really good. Nicolas Cage um has picked some roles that recently that we really did love. His role Agreed. in Pig, this film, when he played uh, freaking uh, uh, the vampire in the vampire film. Which I thought oh, he, he was, was great. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, he's <laughs> great. Know? Hilarious yeah. and, st and still the good, you know? And, I, and I feel like people have finally figured out how to really use that bizarre energy he has. Because <laughs> you're right, all those roles are awesome for him. 
in it. And then when he poked fun at himself in that uh, the movie that he did that was about himself, right. it's, it's like he knows that this is weird and the things that he's done right. uh, in his career. Blair Underwood is awesome. Like, yes. <laughs> why isn't that guy yes. a bigger name than he is now? Uh, like, he's big in the black community. But, yeah, like, for sure. When I tell you this man, like, dumped this role, like, he, he <laughs> killed it. Like, he it was great. Like, when we meet his family, you can tell, you know, he's kind of kind of a scoundrel. You know, he probably drinks a little bit too much, stays out mm -hmm. a little bit too late. And his wife is real nervous about him staying out so late. So maybe he's up to no good. But that these are small things that the his performance and the performance of the wife can convey, right? It's not right. like the wife is like, I'm worried about her drinking. There's no lines about that, right? These are these are things you understand because of his his performance, which I thought yeah. it was just incredible. I'm glad this movie is more of a psychological horror. It's really trying to fuck with your head. And I think it does, at least for me, it worked, it was like super effective. Right. Now, the, the director actually got in some hot water fairly recently. He was asked about the state of horror, and he said that he doesn't like horror movies, even though he's made almost exclusively horror movies. And he called out Pearl and Maxine in particular and saying he <laughs> he says he said he'll never watch those movies. And while I will say he's wrong, because I think Maxine is still worth watching and mm. I love Pearl, I do understand what he is getting at if you're looking for something to really like to really scare you like deep down to really scare you he mm -hmm. is right a lot of these movies don't do that they are kind of like a little carnival ride like a little roller coaster just send you on a roller coaster then you get off and that's it once you're once you're done the roller coaster you're done you know what i mean <laughs> with him making those statements what do you think he thinks about ty west then you know <laughs> clearly he doesn't have much of a <laughs> i think osgood might be uh, a little bit broad by dismissing, <laughs> you know, everyone. Yeah, he's like, like, oh, like everyone. Nah. Yeah, nah. nah. I think okay. it might be a little bit broad, but I, but I do get the sentiment that he is that he is saying because I, I get frustrated too by watching, you know, movies with just jump scares every minute. That kind of stuff is just exhausting to me. I always like movies that treat me like I'm an adult, like a person with a brain. You know, this definitely did feel like a grown up horror film that makes that makes you think. It gives me a lot of hope that a movie like In a Violent Nature and a movie like Long Legs could come out in the same year and they both like meet, if not exceed their hype. And that's, I feel like it's rare. And that's a, that's why that's why that's why I started this channel to talk about <laughs> movies like this weird off putting yes. movies that are difficult to describe or are a true horror in the good way to watch. I have a lot of hope for the mm. genre when you have these two films come out and they're made on a low budget and Great. and then they are starring people that's not really the people that's the uh, the pick of the litter or whatever in Hollywood uh, in, per se. But they come out and they knock it out of the park with great concepts, great directing styles, great themes that 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 um you know yeah. people are talking about from Barbarian to In the Violent Nature to this to what I hope coming up a little bit later, Blink Twice, Zoe Kravitz's uh, new film that she wrote and directed. This is the type of movies that I like that I really like to see. Not saying I don't like the big bang, boom, flashy stuff. I like it when the movie can just pull everyone's attention on itself. You know what I mean? The theater goes really quiet and things get really still and really uncomfortable. And I'm like, oh, I can feel this movie's like, its atmosphere is like falling over the theater. That's a lot of fun. Very fun to watch. Very fun to think about. Very eerie while you're watching it. Very and eerie. It, it was, it's just a great time. And I think people should definitely see this film. And it seems like you think people should see this film also. But more importantly, how do you feel about this film? Get in the comments and let us know what you thought about Long Legs. I'll be waiting. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. We are so close to a thousand subscribers. You all you have to do to help us out with that, if this is your first time seeing us, is to hit that subscribe button right That's at the it. bottom. All right. Real That's all you easy. gotta do. Ain't no long legs gonna come for you. No daddy long legs either, okay? Unless you have Promise. one in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like like a Nicolas Cage in the corner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's, okay. like, he's like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, But if you did like our review for this film, please hit the thumbs up because it really does help out the channel. Or you can leave the thumbs down, whichever you choose. It is your opinion. Just remember one thing. It is mostly wrong.
We'll see you in another video.